Hi everyone, it's Eve Bentley Blogs from spiritgirl.com and welcome to the Spirit Girl Talk Show podcast. I'm super excited to be here with you today in this online audio space with our very special guest, Lyndall Mitchell, who's the founder of Aurora Spas and Aspa. She is also an author and one of the world's leading pioneers in spa and in the spa industry. Lyndall, welcome. <laughs> so great to be with you and your community. Yeah, I'm so, so excited to have you here with our audience today, Lyndall, because I absolutely love your brand, your spas, and everything that you have created when it comes to self-care, self-love, health, wellness, de-stressing, all of those incredible things. Your journey has been so phenomenal for me to watch as a spa blogger who started out uh, many years ago now. And just to see what you have created and what you offer for our spa community here in Australia, but also globally with your products is phenomenal. So I just want to say thank you so much. I'm so honoured to have you here today and to share you with our global Spirit Girl podcast show and community. But I know obviously a lot about your background because I follow you on Instagram and I have for many years followed your journey. But for someone out there and for our listeners tuning in, can you share a little bit about who you are and how your spa journey unfolded? Mm, absolutely. I'd love to share that with you it started quite young for me so i grew up in the currumbin valley so i am a queenslander and i grew up on 140 acres so it was a beautiful organic banana farm and it really you know it was i was surrounded by nature it was raw it was wild it was beautiful it hit my five senses every single day but i guess it wasn't until life became busier and i had more responsibilities that I recognize that nature really is my happy place. And many of us, you know, have our own happy place or we're seeking to find our happy place, whether it's in nature or by the beach or with a beautiful glass of wine and a book, that accessing that happy place is what we're all striving for every day. I managed to keep nature quite close to me because two properties away from where I live was Australia's pioneering health retreat. So at the age of 14, when mum and I had a little honesty stall down on the side of the road selling bananas, we got to know all of the staff that worked at the retreat. And so that was where I went and did my work experience. And as a 14-year-old walking into that retreat environment and seeing these vibrant, healthy staff and these guests having an amazing time, it really planted a seed for me. You know, it was very compelling. At the age of 14, you know, went back to living on the farm. Couldn't be more Australian if I tried to have my own pet kangaroo. And so that was like my dog. Um, and I read that all the way from a little baby. And so, um, you know, life on the farm was pretty simple and pretty beautiful. It was, it was a really wonderful time. But as soon as I finished school, back I went, back to that health retreat to explore that seed that was planted. And I spent the next five years there like a sponge really learning from so many different amazing wellness mentors and you know, there was a bit of a joke about how long I'd stay in a position because I just keep moving and moving and moving because I wanted to try it all I was like I'd love to teach Tai Chi yeah I'll do that yeah I'd love to teach yoga I'll give that a go yeah I'd love to teach aerobics you know so everything up to high ropes abseiling rescuing people you know all of those things were a part of my role so it was so much fun and um, clients often came to the retreat having burnt the candle at both ends. You know, they were burnt out, exhausted. So I had the privilege of stepping inside people's lives and I'd lived a fairly sheltered life. So it was very eye-opening for me to see people with drug addiction, alcohol addiction, stress addiction, you know, just completely emotionally and mentally burnt out. Um, and my job, the, the role I spent the most time in was um, program coordinator, which is the role I was aiming to get to. 
and um, that was when I was I would um, basically help be there for the entire week. So I'd work 100 hours in one week and have a week off, 100 hours on and a week off. So you're there for the entire journey with that client. Yes, you see them burnt out when they come in, but you also see the incredible transformation that happens and when they leave on the other side. So that was phenomenal. The transformation was amazing. However, it left a little something, uh, a little question in the back of my mind sometimes about were they ready to go or what else are we doing to support them for the long term? Because my belief is wellness is not just one week of the year. Yeah, it's it's a long term lifestyle. So. I felt like my job was to show them more sustainable ways to live their life and to do this on a more long-term basis. And so I felt like, you know, um, you know, a little bit like a crash diet. They came in one week, bang, and then out they go. And it's like, well, there's, a, there's another whole chapter here. How are we caring and helping and supporting these clients when they do go back into the real world? How do they do all of these things that they've just learned? You know, and this was, this is 25 years ago. You couldn't just go to a spa. There were no spas in Australia at the time. And so, you know, if you wanted to have a massage, you might go to a gym and have a massage. You want to see a naturopath, you'll try and find one independently. So everything was independent and there was no one place where it all came together. So I decided, okay, I've done five years. That was amazing. Um, such a steep learning curve. I'm so grateful for that. I want to create an urban retreat. So the concept was when these clients come back from the retreat, I can now support them and have all of those services in one place. So it would be a wellness retreat where you could go in an urban environment to continue and support you on your journey of well-being. So to make it all in one portal. When I did my research about creating this urban retreat, there were plenty of clients in the city that didn't want to go to a health retreat or didn't want to invest that time and money in going to a health retreat. So this retreat was actually perfect for them because they just wanted to go somewhere for an hour, once a month or once a week or whatever that would be. So 24 years ago, I opened Aurora Spa. And um, when I said to people, I'm opening a spa, you know, they'd say, are you manufacturing bathtubs? Like, what are you doing? People had no idea what a spa was. Now, the culture in Europe and America was very strong, but over here, we had nothing. So it was helping people to understand what it was and have clients that then arrive for the whole day and would do a day program and some that would come just for an hour so that was how it started and then through I guess starting the retreat it was about no longer do I have these clients for seven days or six days I've got them for one hour so my approach to results has to be really savvy because I need to get maximum results in the minimum amount of time they walk in the door, every minute matters because my job was to, you know, help them get this sense of restoration and renewal so they walked back out feeling different, so you could make a difference, yeah? And so there's two parts to the treatment experience. There's the technique, which I feel like we were really strong in and that was really great, but then there was the product we were using. And I just knew, I was using other brands, I just knew it can be stronger, it can be more potent, we can make a bigger difference here. And so I started hand mixing the products. I'd mix the oils, I'd mix the exfoliants, I'd mix the herbal teas, um, you know, as well as juicing for clients when they arrived and making their lunches and doing all those things in the beginning. But the products was a part of how can we make it stronger? How can we make a difference? And these clients were willing um, to give us the feedback of what really worked. What did they love? What did they not love? What made a difference? So back then I was hand mixing the products and it wasn't until a client asked me, can I buy some of that body cream that you made? And I was like, oh, I hadn't thought about that. And so I put it into a Ziploc bag and gave it to him in a Ziploc bag and thought, not that professional. So I started <laughs> to get into bottles. And that was the point of me when I realized, yes, there is this urban retreat. That's really important. But what's also just as vitally important is that these people can take the products home with them and have self-care at home every day. You can have these moments and these pauses and what I like to call them daily pauses are me moments every single day and they are so important. Even if it's for three seconds or 10 seconds, it's that self-care on a regular basis that I get really passionate about. So if we fast forward to where we are now, you know, the range has 30 products in it. It's absolutely what I call nature in a bottle. 
um, we've put as much nature in there as we possibly can to really make a difference when you use the product. And they're professional spa strength products. So we don't alter them at all for retail. It's what we use in the spa treatments is what we want clients to have at home as well and to have that spa experience. So yes, there's the spas which create, there's sort of three pillars to what I do. The spas that create permission to pause. There's the products which give you that sensory experience and that ability to have self-care day to day. And then there's the wellness coaching side of it. And that has taken on um, you know, writing books. So I've got four books that I've written. I've got Chaos to Come, Shine, Ignite and Restore um, that I've co-authored with a dear friend of mine, Shannon Kennedy. And um, also corporate wellness speaking. So, you know, 25 years ago when I started my business, we weren't getting large corporates knocking on our door saying, come and share the message because you think you're a bit woo-woo, a bit too hippie, a bit too out there. But now wellness is embraced and valued and so people are reaching out to have those wellness experiences for their teams so quite often conferences events speaking at those sorts of things so the wellness coaching side of it is about the teachings excuse me and the i guess the um, life skills that help support the work on an ongoing basis and you know it's the sustainability and the longevity for everyone Wow, that is one impressive journey story. Linda, thank you for sharing that. That for me and all of the listeners tuning in to see what you've created and pioneered during a time when spa wasn't even a thing in Australia. It's just, it's just incredible. It's so phenomenal. And I can't help think now like in... 2020 when we're in a pandemic and we're in a crisis just how much all of the work you've done as to date can now support people at home or in the spa when we when Melbourne reopens again but I just can't help think how much through the products and through your wellness experience and knowledge and books and space and how this can now help other people to feel good from within because I know with COVID-19, so many people are out there and people contact me personally saying how stressed out they are, how fearful they are, how anxious they are. So when it comes to your self-care rituals, Lyndall, you're always giving to other people. You're always so focused on helping others. And your journey and story just highlighted that, how you're always thinking about someone else. But when it comes to your own self-care rituals, what do they look like? Mm. Um, I'm very happy to share those with you. And I just was going to detour for a slight second and say, that, you know, we reached out to our community recently to ask them how they're feeling and what they need from us. You know, and what is everyone feeling, you know, and, and how's the experience for them at the moment? And the response we got was really overwhelming. It was, you know, that everyone is feeling incredibly stressed, fearful, anxious and worried. And so, you know, we sort of workshop some ways to, to help our clients do that. And that really feeds into, I guess, what I believe or, or what I find really helpful and useful. And I've needed my self-care in the last you know, since March, the first COVID lockdown, more than ever, because COVID for me has been, um, you know, I was meant to be walking Camino in October with a group of 15 people and leading with Shanna and I leading a wellness journey on the trails and retreats. So I had so many different conferences, events and things. And so everything obviously shifted very quickly to being none of that and all about my businesses. And, um, I think the way I can explain how it felt to me was when COVID lockdown hit, you know, I was, I've always been working on moving my business forward and thinking, you know, what are we doing next step planning and all that side. And that just sort of put on a really big pause. And I went to how do I answer the phone and how do I redeem a gift voucher and how do I process an order and just trying to recall all those files that were way back in my memory and put that into practice because immediately we had no workforce. You know, we went from 
you know, having our 35 staff to having no one in the warehouse, you know, when we couldn't have people in the warehouse. So it's just that quick learning curve of supporting the products and keeping things moving and all the clients that didn't know what was happening. And so it was incredibly intense and just volume of hours that required um, because it was like a new girl on the job um, of trying to get all that done was like, I really needed my self care, you know, and for me, I always try and make self care really practical because what I find from my clients and the Aurora and the Aspar community is that no one's got this huge amount of extra time. They go, oh, here we go. This is my self care every day. There's 90 minutes or, you know, there's a couple of hours. Sure, on the weekend, you're going to have more. But during the day, it's about the small things just that help to refuel our nervous system. It's all about how are we minimizing the triggers of our stress response because, you know, we can be triggering it up to 12 times a day. It's what impacts our health negatively and ages us prematurely and has us feeling really um, not very grounded. You know, it's when anxiety can start to come up and fear and worry and we're not at our best when we're like that. We're not seeing the best solutions or the best opportunities. It's about how can we you know, all my years of, I guess, training came into it for me because my stress response was getting triggered pretty quickly back in the start of COVID. It's like, I've really got to intentionally practice what I preach now and really call on all of those skills and intentionally cultivate my relaxation response so I can do my best here. And your relaxation response is something that you build up like a muscle. You don't go to the gym once and think you're fit forever. Your relaxation response is the same. It's a muscle that you work and you keep it nice and lean and you can call on it when you need it. And so that relaxation response are the practices that you put into um, your routine daily. So the one that I do, I guess I've got two different sets that I'll talk about. One is my daily pauses, which is what I do throughout the day and how I can just stop, have 10 seconds, 20 seconds, bring myself back. So the first thing is my breathing. So diaphragmatic breathing, but I do it with my product. So we're all washing our hands an enormous amount of time at the moment. And so we've created our botanical hand wash. Now you can use any essential oil hand wash with this one, but I like to, every time I wash my hands, I do what is three steps. So apply, which is a couple of pumps, activate. So activate with the essential oils, unlock the essential oils, get into the pressure points in between the thumb, the thumb and the forefinger, release these points. And then before you rinse your hand wash, three deep breaths down into the belly. Now the essential oils that we put in our hand wash are mind calming essential oils. So every time you go to the bathroom and wash your hands or you're in the kitchen and you wash your hands, you're having this mini reset for your nervous system. It's like a pause during the day. Now, if you do that 30 times, 20 times a day, when you get to the end of the day, you're going to feel a little different. You're going to feel like it's easier to switch off. You're going to feel like you can sort of ease into your evening routine and probably have a better sleep quality and quantity. So this is around these little mini micro pauses you can take. And I find the hand washing a really great way to transform a task that you're doing every day or a chore into an intentional mindfulness ritual that actually totally supports and refuels your nervous system. So that's the first one that I love. So I do that throughout the day. And then the other one I have is, you know, if you've got your little spritz, you've got, we have a rose hydrosol spritz, which is um, really great for sensitive skin, but in Queensland, you can pop it in the fridge if it's warm or it's just, you know, having this on my desk and then during the day, like my caffeine hit, I don't drink coffee, but you know, this is like my caffeine hits in the afternoon when you're feeling a little bit tired. This can be that sort of, you take in the rose, you have three deep breaths. Again, the diaphragmatic breath is soothing the nervous system and then away you go and your work looks different. It's like, ah, I'm refreshed, I'm ready to go. So they're like what I call little daily pauses, little me moments, and these refuels are really significantly important. It's about refueling you mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And when we're at our best, we're refueled in all those areas, yeah? So during the day, they're my go-to, and then in the evenings and the mornings, I call them my bookends of the day. 
And it's about the practices that are non-negotiable for me because these are like my sort of framework, you know. We can't really control what happens during the day. Um, we never know what curveball's gonna come our way or what we need to you know, adapt, pivot, do whatever we need to do with. But we can control how we start the day and how we finish the day. That is under our control. So it's about how can we you know, commit to the things and make change to the things that we can influence and just accept the things that we can't change. We can't change when the sun rises, what time that is, who the Prime Minister is today, but we can change morning and evening. You know, we can actually be in control of that. So for me, it's how I start the day. So you know, before I get out of bed, I have three deep breaths. So I never get out of bed before I just start that day by just refueling consciously, filling up oxygen in my body. And then um, in the morning, it's, you know, first one is make my bed. So it's a success habit straight away. You've had um, 101 habits, the easiest win for your day. And it's building on the momentum of that. So then you've had a win within the first 10 seconds of getting out of bed. So then you carry that positive feel-good hormone into the next part, which is exercise. So it's how you move your body. So for me, moving my body every day, non-negotiable. But just moving my body, it's like a tapas menu. It might be yoga. It might be a walk around the block if I'm really tired. It might be a walk with my little dog, Luna. It might be um, a run. This morning it was an 8K run. It might be weights. It can be so different, but it's a scheduled session in the morning, you know, depending on that's always there. And then after that, I have my mindful shower. So my mindful shower is how I transform my daily shower into a mindful ritual. It doesn't take any longer than your normal shower, but you're making the most of those minutes. So you're maximizing your minutes. So again, when I'm using my body cleanser, let me just see if I've got one here. Yeah. So we have two body cleansers, but one that I particularly love in the morning is the grapefruit and seaweed body cleanser, great for lymphatic drainage and circulation. So I use this every single morning and similarly, the same way. So apply, you've got a small amount, then you activate. So when you activate, wash your body down and then before you rinse it away, make the most of the goodness that's on your hands by taking three deep breaths. Now that grapefruit, mandarin, sweet orange, it's zesty, it's incredible, it's so intense and then through the day if I feel the pressure mounting I can go back and recall that experience because I was so present that you can then go back and recall it throughout the day whereas if you just have your shower and you're on to the next thing breakfast da, 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 you can't get the benefit out of those minutes as much as you're just taking a little bit extra intention and then you can use that throughout the day so that's the way I transform my shower into a mindful ritual so that was my morning one. And then my evening is journaling to start with. So always downloading how I'm feeling. <clears throat> Thoughts, events, anything that I feel like I'd like to get out. Journaling, finishing with gratitude. I then go into my balm, which I, I've created a rosemary and clove thermal balm, which is actually for all of our deep tissue massage. So in our treatments, our deep tissue massage is our most popular treatment. And I sort of felt like while we were working on other areas of the body, we could have a thermal balm on the neck and shoulders as everyone has such a, what's it called, technique. From looking at all our technology, we get sore muscles and sore shoulders. So we created a petrochemical free thermal balm. And so we apply that in our, um, in our massages. That's what it looks like. And I use this every single night to clear my thoughts. So this is a zesty, it's camphor, spearmint, clove, it's really intense. And so I apply a small amount onto the, my fingers and then rub that into the back of my neck and my shoulders, right into those amazing pressure points. And then finish my three deck breaths. So as well as having this working on the muscles in my back and my neck, it clears my thoughts. And it signifies sleep to my body and my mind. And that's really important because as babies, we need to be trained how to sleep, you know, and we almost need to retrain ourselves, especially if you have insomnia and you have some sleep issues and you're struggling with waking up and not getting back to sleep. Try some really intentional rituals to signify to your body that it's time to switch off. 
After I've done that is when I do my meditation. So I prefer to meditate at night. I find it a gentle unwinding practice. I have recorded, um, I think there's six meditations on Insight Timer, um, which is a free app from New Zealand. And there's a deep sleep and a short sleep meditation on there as well as the morning ones. So they're a really great resource to help just to calm the thoughts down. We never will get rid of our thoughts, but it's how we can just quieten that mind down, ready to signify sleep. So I travel with, you know, this with me. It goes everywhere with me with my little bum. But they sort of, I guess, they're my bookends that frame my day. Big answer to your question. <laughs> yeah, no, that was so... These self-care rituals are so beautiful. I couldn't help think, especially during the pandemic crisis, COVID, how so many of us, we can all fall in the trap of buying, say, the 99% germ-free hand wash, and you're like, ooh, you know, quick, 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 and you're sort of so stressed out But when doing it. And um, when you talked about your self-care ritual and just how you have that as a pause and a reset and you're you know just really tuning into the scent and and calming the central nervous system it's completely opposite <laughs> to you know the whole quick get this you well know. we've had so many people calling us saying their hands are irritated and yeah. dry and and that our hand wash fixes their hands because it doesn't strip all those natural, beautiful oils off your skin. But that's the whole thing of, I guess, that's when we reached out to our community and said, what do you need from us? That was, you know, they were, you know, yes, everyone's got a little more time, especially in Melbourne where we're in full lockdown. But it's about how can we make these daily rituals? And so we created an online course, which has been my, Complete focus in this last chapter of COVID is my intention because I, I didn't realise, but creating an online course, we've never done one before, it, creating an online course is like writing a book. It's very similar in the amount of, I guess, information that you want to share um, in the course. So we have a course launching tomorrow called Daily Rituals to Reduce Your Stress. And that is all about self-care practices that are really practical that are easy for you to implement. And they're like a tapas menu. I'll take that, I'll leave that for now. I take that, I'll leave that. And just try one thing and see how you go with one thing and the difference that makes. And then the next thing. And so it's a, a combination of all of those rituals coming together and you actually get products delivered to your door to do the rituals with. So um, it's pretty exciting. I'm a bit excited about that one. That sounds so exciting. Now how can we become part of that course? Like how can our listeners and our Spirit Girl community uh, get involved in the course or become part of it? Because that sounds like a really amazing way, reset, to focus purely on changing, say, these simple things like hand washing and even like um, washing yourself in the shower to yes. actually switching it to a self-care ritual and a wellness yeah. ritual and a aspa ritual. Well, that thermal balm, the grapefruit body cleanser, the hand wash and a hand cream all come with the course. So they're the rituals I really expand upon. And so aspa is our website, so www.aspar.com.au and that's where you can sign up to the course and you'll get the teachings delivered to your inbox. So it's self-paced, you can do it when you want to and I've broken all the modules down into bite-sized pieces three minutes of learning two minutes of learning five minutes of learning so you can just sort of take it at your own pace within each module and then there's worksheets to reflect on and complete so you keep them forever you might do them again in 12 months time or six months time six of my meditations and a morning and an evening yoga practice so it's sort of I wanted to give everyone the tools to do it all at home. How can you have your little spa at home? And this is a way I, I thought would be a, a great way to um, bring that experience to everyone and make it easy for them. I love, love, love this because what strikes me there is you can have your own spa at home wellness retreat because I'm receiving a lot of messages from people in Melbourne, particularly who are missing going to the spa, who are just... Yeah 
craving for a massage, um, a facial, and just to be able to book in and go to the spa. So this yeah. will be a really great way for also anyone who's wanting to embark on their own wellness journey and self-care journey, because I just love how you've structured, to me, the whole, I'm blown away by the whole hand washing thing because I can even become guilty of being in that, like still doing it for the duration, but not actually it being of enjoyment. Um, yeah. You know, you're doing it because you know you have to, more so because you're stressed out at times or anxious because you're worried about COVID or getting coronavirus or COVID. Yeah, yeah so, you're doing it in your body but not in your mind. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, um, you know, obviously so much has changed this year with COVID-19 and you mentioned how you were going to be going on this retreat walk with Shana Kennedy. And I actually had the pleasure of interviewing her as one oh, of Australia's yeah. top life coaches. Yes, and yes. she's absolutely beautiful. We, and I'm so pleased that you two have these self-care books also out there. Uh, but it's just incredible that you both have been able to share words of wisdom to help other people because being stuck at home isn't normal that we're not used to it, especially in Australia. We're such outdoors people. We're so used to like booking into the spa. And I even know when I was in lockdown, I really struggled uh, probably definitely by week six when I couldn't go to the spa or couldn't get a massage. So I loved how you talked about the balm and then rubbing it up, you know, towards the neck and in the temple, like in the pressure point areas. But even also that spritz, on your face just to refresh because if you are having to go to work um, which we are at the moment we're fortunate in Queensland to be able to go to the go to work yeah. but that's a really nice introduction just to spritz the face because I know in my experience if you drink too much coffee and you're already stressed out your central nervous system adrenal gland it just it can create even more havoc for the stress, it can make you feel even more stressed and more anxious. So I just really thought, oh, that's such a good way. Now, Lyndall, everyone's going to be wanting to know this question. Before COVID-19, you were absolutely able to book people in for spas and treatments. As the founder of Aurora Spas, is there a favourite spa treatment you like to have or would like to have when you can reopen the spas <laughs> and come out of this lockdown, you know, stage four lockdown? Yeah. What's your I think I've had absolutely anything at the moment. So <laughs> <laughs> I think I would too. I'd be like start at the top of the menu. <laughs> Look, I have a couple of favourites. We have a signature treatment that we created in our steam rooms called Gadia Danu, which means um, Indigenous Web for Salty Stone. And it's a full experience. It's like a car wash for your body is the best way I can explain it. And it's just amazing. The, the warm steam opens the pores of the skin, helps to relax the muscles. And then you have a dual exfoliation and massage and cold stones over the meridians facial hair masks like it's it's the whole thing so that's our signature treatment that I love and really um am missing and um then my deep tissue massage would be the other one you know I do move my body every day and I find that you know that's great that you're sort of you know waking up new muscles all the time and, and a little bit of manipulation and working on those muscles is another area so I've been using my balm and actually my heat pillow an enormous amount you know, and actually even sleeping with it across my shoulders, you know, lying down, having it under my neck. So I find that, um, you know, that's been a really great thing. But I love my deep, my deep tissue massage is something I really love and I eat. I reckon the deep, deep tissue massage is what every person living in Melbourne, Victoria, right about now, <laughs> desperately wants um, to release all that stress and tension because... Melbourne's been under probably the most extreme lockdowns they're reporting in the world when it comes to COVID-19. But we should say we're um, super grateful that 
slowly um, things are getting better and my heart goes out to every person who is really struggling at home and not coping with staying at home and not coping with uh, being inside. It's not their norm. Um, and yeah, yeah my heart goes out to everyone. A lot of different experiences. I do um, a bit of, I do quite a bit of one-on-one -on -one coaching as well, executive coaching and different types of life coaching and um, people are having a lot of space to think about things as well so there are some real blessings in it and some reflection points of perhaps doing work differently or you know I've got um, a client who has started a completely new business that has just gone crazy that he has only ever dreamed of and you know similarly for me I would never have done this online course if the spa was running and the you know the life was going normally I'm traveling and that oh God, it's, it, I don't know how to do all that, you know. So we have had this blessing where we could look at um, those things that have been there, and say, you know, those projects that are in the back of your mind and you think, you know, I would like to give that a go or maybe the level of stress I was working at and putting my body under isn't the way I want to do it next in this next chapter. How could I do that differently? So I think there's, you know, some wonderful reflections and insights that will come out of it as well. And it's, there's no doubt it's been incredibly hard for a lot of people. And I've spoken to a lot of people that are struggling with, we have donated um, the uh, spritzes to the frontliners. So we actually um, donated 600 of these into the hospitals because the doctors and the nurses have got their masks on. So they're getting irritated skin. Um, and they're not um, drinking as much because of all the what they're wearing. So they're dehydrated. So their skin is dehydrated and irritated. So we donated 600 of these on. And then we also donated into Safe Steps, which is about women's domestic violence and gave them a whole big delivery of spa pyjamas because there's a, you know domestic violence is, is at a really high point at the moment and it's it's really tough. And so to give them some resources that they can use as well, it's just really looking I guess at how we support each other and um, you know what that looks like and you know and uh, there's some people doing some amazing things and Phil at the front line has created a business within a month and he has donated something like two million dollars worth of um, products into the front liners and he's still going and you know he just started that when COVID hit so there's some, there's some incredible stories as well yeah, that is so incredible. You have the biggest, kindest heart to think of the frontliners and especially the women going through the domestic violence, um, which is so sad and heartbreaking. But to give in a time where your spa is closed and things are definitely not the norm is so beautifully kind of you, caring. And you're so beautiful, Lyndall, to do that, to give them that gift. Um, so incredible. I love though how you mentioned all of the beautiful things to come out of it or all of the opportunity that you've also had now to do the wellness course and connect and, and like even today we're doing this Zoom, um, you know, like podcast yeah. interview and this is something I wouldn't normally be doing because I'd be traveling um, in the Maldives or traveling or too busy. So I feel for COVID-19, one of the greatest things was switching from obviously couldn't do the travel shows and lockdown, but now doing the podcast show and then being in a uh, place of being able to serve and help others by connecting them to your incredible story words, wisdom, spa products, and also the wellness course. Like it truly is a... Uh, completely different thing that I would imagine I'd be doing right about now but you are right there are so many beautiful things coming from this where I feel we're connecting more as a community we're definitely spending more time on reading the actual post on the Instagram under the photo or you know catching up via video or catching up just we've got more time to talk yeah time to communicate and that's probably one of the greatest things to come out of COVID-19 is reconnecting again as a community and just as human beings talking and communicating and checking in with how we are and asking, are you okay? 
authenticity and a lot of um you know even with the course for me you know, I, I normally have things I like them all to look a certain way and be visually you know really peaceful for people to engage in and we're in stage four lockdown so getting someone to come and film that is actually impossible so my family we did it ourselves so I've got my husband on the camera my 13 year old daughter Grace on um, sound my 15 year old Poppy is on environment and we're just doing it live and my dog comes in every now and again and it's like okay so this is different not what I imagined but it's very authentic and you know like I said afterwards I thought about it and I thought what's well, a personal journey for everyone. So welcome to my home. This is my home, you know, and, and we did the whole thing at home and we filmed it ourselves and we've never filmed anything in our lives. So it's a new experience. Oh my God. I love that. I love that. That's a family experience. That is so incredible. I remember even in the first lockdown seeing Alan DeGeneres, like she was running shows from her um, couch and I've been seeing lots of celebrities or lots of founders um, sharing themselves at their home. It's just become so normal now and just seeing people in their house. Whereas before, you never saw anyone, you know, filming in their house or... Exactly. Yeah. We've got more access to, say, yourself as the founder of Aurora Spas um, because normally you would be really on a, a schedule of events and speaking and doing wellness workshops and wellness events and um, things like that. I want to ask you, Linda, before we say goodbye in a moment, Aurora Spas, when you went to say pick your brand name, which some people struggle with or, or it can take their longest time of working out what to call their business, mm. what to call their brand, did you have like a light bulb moment or as Oprah would say, an aha moment? Like when it came to working out, what am I going to call my spa brand? What am I going to call my spa products? How did I that kind of evolve? I a little uh, message from the universe is what I got. Um, I went out for dinner with my husband and we were in Albert Park living at the time and had a beautiful dinner and I was really, I'd spent a whole day in meditation. So I spent a whole day meditating on what I wanted to create. And so I was telling him all about, it. I want to create this urban retreat where people come for an hour, come blah, blah, blah. And he's like, okay. So, and then we were walking, we were still talking about over dinner for hours and then we walked home. And he said, so if you did have a business, what do you think you'd call it? Like, what do you think you'd call that business? And at that moment, we're walking down this beautiful tree, leafy, beautiful street. Feels like you're in Europe when you're in Albert Park. And um, I just stopped for a moment and there's a beautiful old historic house and it was called Aurora. I said, gee, Aurora is a beautiful word, isn't it? I wonder what it means. I didn't know what Aurora meant. And so I said, let's, let's go home and, and have a look. So Aurora is, you know, the strongest energy you can, you think Aurora Borealis. It's about refueling energy. It's about the highest vibration of energy you can have. And what more would I want for my clients, you know, to have that energy. It's also goddess of the dawn. And I was up every single morning training clients at five o'clock, um, personal training as well. So I was like, I'm up, I love the morning. So that works. And then it's this whole thing around the energy being absolutely at its purest form and totally recharge. And that's when you get all the Borealis lights, the Aurora Borealis. So it was, it was a beautiful um, moment, I would say, when it was just meant to be. And I was like, I, I love it if that's what it is. Wow, that is so beautiful. I'm so glad I asked that question for our listeners because I've always wanted to know where, where the inspiration came from. I find it fascinating that in that moment you looked up and Albert Park is so beautiful, so lush and green, but to look up at that moment and then to then go and really d dig deep into okay so sign from the universe there's a sign aurora and then what does it mean i find i get moments like that too where it's just there's a sign i always say it's a sign from the universe and then when yeah. i go and do some more research it's like wow 
So I'm so glad you shared that message. That is incredible. Linda, we, um, I always believe when I go to the spa that I can just turn up totally stressed out, really tense, anxious, um, not feeling good, just, you know, maybe I haven't been sleeping well. It's just I'm all off kilter. And I always truly believe from the moment I visit the spa or even step in to the spa, it's like this big weight is lifted off my shoulders. I'm here to surrender. And when I get the therapy and receive the therapy from the spa therapist, I truly believe that they are healers, that they have this beautiful way of just really nurturing our body, mind, spirit, soul, and that the therapists are so important to a spa or the way they make our people, you know, make me feel or your clients feel and that their touch and, and is so important that they're healers. Would you agree? Like spa therapists, um, I always say they're under, underrated. Like they need to be like, I'm cheering them on, I'm spirit girl, <laughs> and I'm trying to share more of the message of how important our spa therapists are in our spa, as well as yourself, Lindell spa owners, spa founders. But I'm always um, sharing this message of how important our spa therapists are because they can truly change the way we feel from within, going from stress to de-stress. Like, wow, you know, the world, it's too hard to, I, I've got this. I feel like a brand new person again. Would you agree that our spa therapists or your spa therapists are so important in our overall community of health and wellness? They are the most you know, I, I guess nurses are as well, but they are the most caring people with the biggest hearts. And that's what you get when you get into that treatment environment, you can feel the connection. And I, um, I guess I go back a step from that in that for me, spa starts when you make the first call to make the booking. And so it's about how's that person making you feel or helping you feel in that point. And then when you arrive, the person that is present and ready and able to give you that sense of surrender from the moment you step in the door. So that spa experience starts when you step in the door, not when you're just on the table. There's a whole journey before that with us. It's a, you know, it's a herbal tea ritual. It's that space to sit. It's that space of reflection. It's reading the literature that's going to really help infuse those thought, peaceful thoughts and then the treatment experience and then post as well. So there's a whole journey in it that everyone contributes to and I think it's incredible and I always talk about our team, our mission is to deliver what I call the R factor and the R is <sighs> so that everyone gets a sense of surrender. Now whether you're in the spa able to do that, amazing. But we also say that whenever anyone opens or uses one of our products, that is our goal, that they get a sense of surrender. They get a moment of that, oh, I've arrived. I've arrived here totally in my mind and my body. And that's what we're aiming to do, whether um, our clients can get to the spa or not, is they deliver that sense of surrender. And yes, the spa therapists are absolutely vital, as are, you know, um, our client services team, our managers, there's so many people that are involved in one spa experience. And, you know, there are about seven touch points all the way through of the different experience. And you want to have that consistency so that people are completely switching off, that they're not going back. You know, we have simple things in the spa that I, I when I train my staff, is that I would never want to hear, how was your day? That's just not in the vocabulary of Aurora. That's not what we want. Because what's happened, you've come into the spa experience. We've done an amazing greeting. We've taken you upstairs. We've got you into the lounge. You're having your herbal tea. Amazing. You've surrendered even more. You're, you're dropping down further and further into that relaxation response, right? And then your therapist collects you and then you walk to your room and they say how's your day and you go well I had um trouble finding a park and I had to drop my child off to childcare. and actually oh no, I just had to take a work call outside I didn't realize blah, blah, blah. we just lost you 
we've just put all that hard work into helping you surrender into that relaxation response to refuel your nervous system and mentally you just left her. So we want to instead say, how are you feeling today? What are your objectives with your treatment experience today? That is really vital information that we can actually make a better treatment from. From us knowing how's your day been, it's not actually that important to us to know if you got a path or you didn't get a path. What is important is how are you feeling and how can we help you? because we can do more with that. We don't want you going back to that sense of trigger, that sense of stress response. We wanna keep you here. So there's little things you know, over the years that I guess I've implemented in that I find are really important to, to, to make a difference to people's experience, ultimately for them to walk out and go, oh, I feel so different. You know, I always talk about clients come in on the triple O all the time, overworked, overwhelmed, overtired. And we call it our triple O and that's what it is. You know, people just are coming in in that state and our job is to help transition that out of triple O. Oh, wow. Thank you for sharing that because that's such a beautiful insight. And I've experienced the how was your day and that then just, I, and then I start thinking about it and then it's like, oh, now I feel really stressed out and then it's on my mind and I'm here to sort of de-stress and, and um, I really don't want to talk about my day <laughs> because it's, it was shit, <laughs> you know, like it sucked. <laughs> and now I agree. I am um, the best. I don't want to relive it. <laughs> no, no. I'm like, I'm here actually. And not get away from it. I'm actually here for a break. I want to take time out, you know, like I need a break. I'm here to have that break. So I love that. That's a really beautiful message for every spa therapist out there who maybe don't realize because, you know, they're young and they're learning or they're, old, or they're old and they're learning whatever age they're learning at. But um, I totally agree. When I don't get asked, I completely forget about my day. And then I'm so present and I'm so in the moment with, like you said, the tea and, and, yeah. and then when they do ask me what I'm here for and it's like, oh, okay, all right, let's download that. I've got a really sore tech neck. I can't, you know, I'm so stressed out. <laughs> like I'm, I'm doing too much and, and um, it's so um, incredible that you shared those tips. Now, Lyndall, I could talk to you forever about Aurora Spa spa you know how much i love spa i could talk about a spa forever and also just spa 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 because i'm just i think for me it transformed my life so much from the moment when i thought i wasn't coping i can't do this i'm not coping i'm and the whole world's on top of me and then the moment when i discovered that i could cope better or feel better by visiting a spa, the spa, and then incorporating spa therapy and spa rituals and, and wellness rituals into my life. Mm. The whole overall package of the meditation, the journaling, the self-development, you know, the yoga or the exercise, but also with the treatments, the therapies, and then using the products um, it's just sort of like this overall wellness uh, ritual or lifestyle. Because, see, when I first started talking about spa or presenting spa, at the time in mainstream media, they were still very much talking about it being a luxury. Yeah. It's a luxury item. It's luxury. And I'm like, no, it's not. It's essential. You like you're totally stressed out there's nothing luxury about this it's essential to your health your your mental health your own physical emotional spiritual well-being and i truly felt like i had stumbled across an ancient ritual that would get us through modern times mm. where you sort of got onto that spa therapy bed and you received the treatment and it was just like oh, like a whole new person again the transformation in the mind, the body, the soul, uh, physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally was so profound that I was like, oh, wow, you know, I'm, like I've got to let everybody know about this. Everybody needs to know about how the spa can transform the way they feel from within 
And then I was so compelled. Like, I honestly thought when I was in Australia, I'd stumbled across something like no one else had ever found before. Like, oh, my goodness. And you know what I mean, um, being a a pioneer in spa um, therapy and running spas and having your own spa brand. But I'm still as passionate as I am today and even more. um, And now that spa's becoming the norm, like it's wellness, it's the norm, it's not... It's not seen as a luxury. We're talking about it as essential, a daily ritual. That's what in Europe, I mean, that's why I'm so inspired by the European spa culture. It's a part of their healthcare system. They recognise that this improves their health and well-being. I mean, they're miles ahead from us and that's where we can get to. And, you know, I'm always inspired by the European model for spa treatments for us. I did a trip when I did 60 spas in six weeks around the globe and that was in my research phase of looking at what are the rituals and what are the treatments that make a big difference and seeing different spas and retreats and seeing what made people feel different you know what was it you know because we didn't have any here in Australia so I couldn't see what was happening but I wanted to learn more about it I'd only worked in one retreat and I was like well what else is happening out there there's a whole big world and I've lived in a valley, in a secluded valley all my life. So I, I went out and did this trip where we did 60 spas in six weeks and it was phenomenal. And we got to see some of the most incredible spas. My two favourite spas in the world still remain is Therme Valles is number one in a tiny little town called Valles in Switzerland. And that is a phenomenal spa experience. And um, the spa is basically a community project that was built where everyone gave feedback. The um, quartz slabs were all taken from the mountains. The water is pumped from the mountains. I was in the pool, outdoor thermal pool, while the snow was just gently drifting down and landing on me. And then there were goats grazing on the green sort of um, hills right next to me. Like it, it is... And architecturally, you know, it's won so many awards. It's the most amazing bathing experience in the world. It's phenomenal. So Thermae Vows is number one. And what I loved about Thermae Vows, they connected to everything they were known for. The beautiful thermal waters, the beautiful stone, this incredible design that they did so effortlessly. And I, you know, going into it from Australia, I'm like, now, is there, a, is there a way I'm meant to do this bathing? Do I go in an order? Do I go, you know, which one's number one? Which one's number two? And he said, be guided by your intuition. I was like, wow, this is really profound. You know, there was no signs. There was nothing in the European. So it's all about the look and feel. There's no big exit signs or anything like that anywhere. Um, it was just the most amazing experience. So we arrived there at night time and it was sight and bathing. So it's even more compelling. So that was amazing. The other one was Mayamo Spa in Sedona, in Arizona. And I thought that was phenomenal as well. And the reason I guess I love that is the spa has been built very sympathetically into these beautiful red hills, red dirt hills, that similar to the colour of Uluru. So this red, amazing backdrop of Arizona and then this beautiful spa that's been very sympathetically built and in your... Um, I'm not sure if it's still the same, but when I was there in the lounge where you actually sit and wait for your treatment, it's red earth. So they've actually left the floor as is and the Native American Indians come in every year and bless the space. And you, they have some of the most amazing indigenous treatments and healing methods and the outdoor massage upstairs, you're looking into these beautiful red canyons. Like there's this amazing backdrop. And so that was a whole um you know the food was macrobiotic so it was all about gut health and everything just was so wellness but sympathetically done and just um very much about their story and their origin which is why i created the steam room treatment for us it was like we live in a cool climate so you know people want to be warm and bringing in the indigenous philosophies and treatment um, procedures into the KK. I love this. This is, those two spas you mentioned sound so amazing. And I love how much research you did, 60 spas. I'm like, that must have been like 
That is every spa it girl's dream, just to go <laughs> around, travel around the world, researching different spas. I know. I, I, say the... that I wasn't having treatments at every one. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> but that is just so beautiful. And I just love how then you were able to create, like, credit to you for introducing the Indigenous rituals and cultures also because we are one of the we are the oldest cultural spiritual world you know country um we it's just and to incorporate that into the treatments you're just sort of honing into all of those ancient rituals and philosophies okay. and just there we have, but we you, you just described that we have so much to learn so much to look forward to when we're able to travel again internationally or even across the borders from Melbourne um, to Queensland when that happens. But you just really highlighted that even as yourself as a founder of a spa, you're still willing to, you know, open up, to learn, to grow, to develop. Oh, and and I go away every year and have done every year on retreat myself as a part of my own growth and learning. So I, the last four years I've been to Kamalaya Health Retreat in Thailand in Koh Samui. Um, and, you know, John and Karina, again, incredible wellness pioneers that have created an amazing space and they've got some of the most incredible therapists there. And so the Kamalaya, the food, the the nature that you're in. I just feel like every cell in my body is topped up when I go there. So um, I get there every year and I feel like that's, you know, I learn from so many mentors there. There's some amazing mentors that have been Buddhist monks that are now teaching as in counselling and running workshops. And so you get some incredible insights. I always leave there, you know, with so much more to think about and reflect on and to implement into my life. I love how you do that. You take that retreat each year to just nurture yourself but develop and learn. And I've gone on a couple of wellness retreats um, for all of our listeners and Lyndall. And I too have learned from these spiritual gurus. Yeah. And quite often they won't have, you know, a six million um, followers, but they are so full of wisdom. And when they speak, it's like, oh, so profound um, that I even remember in Bali, one of the Bali healers and yoga teachers was talking about, you know, doing the body rituals, but loving your arm. I love my arm. I love my arm. Whereas normally we might be going, oh, I hate my arm. I've got too much fat on there. I need to do yeah. some weights and so yeah. self-critical. And I'll never forget that um, discussion with him really just... I even thought of it even only last night about the loving of our being, you know, loving ourselves. But what I do love, Lyndall, is in COVID-19 prior, we were all so busy. One of the best things to come out of this is it's allowed us to have a reset, to slow down, to get more connected with our, you know, bringing that mind back into our body and feeling connected and I really believe our new norm is going to be doing less, not more, and practicing the art of self-care and practicing the art of just going slow and that's okay. Like just really slowing down and living a really incredible life where we get to see the signs, we get to communicate with others, we get to nurture ourselves and we get to take that central nervous system from, you know, overload and that anxious state and being and craziness. Um, and I know definitely even when the international borders do reopen, I'm still, even though everybody's like, oh, we're going to do this, do this, I'm still going to continue to do the self-care rituals, read the books, do the journaling, um, yeah. take on board all of your incredible wellness self-care course that you've got teaching us those pause, me moments, slow moments, because I think if we don't, we're just going to go back to burnout again, overwork again, and 
burning out isn't good. As ambitious as we all are, burning out isn't the answer no. to life and good health and wellness. So, Lyndall, how can our Spirit Girl audience and community stay in contact with you now personally um, after this podcast show? Sure. So um, my Insta is probably the easiest way, just Lyndall Mitchell um, is on my Insta, so you can always DM me on that. Um, but we've also got the Aspa Insta page as well. Probably the easiest way if you're interested in the products and the creations that we have, because we do have some new products coming out um, in the start of you know, end of the year and going into next year as well. The Aspa website, you can just sign up to our newsletter and when we create new products, we let everyone know about that as well. So the Aspa community is probably the, the best way. You can go Insta or sign up to the website. And then for me, yeah, Lyndall Mitchell and then the books that I mentioned, um, they're all available online and also in audio. So you can track them down through Booktopia or something like that as well. Perfect. And I'll make sure I put the links in the bottom of this YouTube on Spirit Girl and also in Apple's podcast, Spotify podcast and all the other podcast apps so everyone can stay in contact with you. Super excited about the launch of your course. Um, that's going to be really exciting for our Spirit Girl community but also for all of your clients. Um, yeah. And But also for so many in Victoria because really... Um, you guys have just been an extreme lockdown, but I'm super excited that things are, are improving. Um, and I can't wait for you to all be back at the spa. And I can't wait. Your phone's going to be ringing red hot. When, when, that, when that opening date happens, look out. Like it's going to be whoever's taking all of those phone calls. I um, send you all my love and light because you'll really need all of these self-care rituals to keep up with um, the pace because the first place everyone's going to go is to Aurora Spa there and um, to help de-stress and feel good and feel back on top of the world again. So, Lyndall Mitchell, thank you so much for sharing your words of wisdom, your story, your journey. Your tips are incredible. They're practical. Any one of us can now apply it. And thank you for just spending so much time just sharing more about Aurora Spa and your pioneering spa journey in Australia. You're recognised as one of our top Australian spa industry pioneers, but also globally. So I'm super grateful and honoured for all of the hard work you do to help others feel good from within. So it's a real, really gratitude to you so much, um, gratitude and it's just been an honor spending time with such an, a beautiful incredible inspiring woman like yourself so thank you oh you're so welcome it's been a privilege for me as well to share with your community so i just hope that you know there's some little things that can help people to reduce stress ultimately we just want to help in whatever way we can so thank you for having me as well yeah thank you so much so, Spirit Girl podcast listeners, thank you so much for tuning into today's podcast episode with Lyndall Mitchell, who is the founder of Aurora Spa, as Spa. Lyndall has just shared so many words of wisdom, tips. I really hope it helps you to feel good from within. And I thank you again for being part of our Spirit Girl community and podcast show. I would love for you to subscribe, to leave a five-star rating and re review, and to tell someone you love to. And together, let's feel good from within. I love you all to bits. I will see you on the next Spirit Girl talk show. Stay happy, healthy, and keep practicing self-care to feel good from within. Bye for now.